Ideas, imagination, inspiration, macro world. Here's your host, Ray Scott. I have to say, I'm really, really happy to have you here for another episode of Macro World because this project today, I think you are going to end up loving. However, there are a few things that you're going to need, and one of them is patience. There's no easy way around it. This project takes patience because quite often it just doesn't go the way you want it to right off the top. In fact, I was having so much trouble with this particular one this day that uh, I almost gave up and said, okay, you know something, I'll go back to it tomorrow, that kind of thing. But I hung in there and the results were stunning. Now, you may be looking at this stuff in front of me here and wondering, what are we going to do with it? Well, we are looking at water drop refraction today. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically drop uh, something inside of a water drop. All right. Now what we're going to do, what we're going to need today, aside from your macro lens and perhaps even uh, some extension tubes, something like this, a checkerboard. All right. That's what I was using. You can use anything you want or perhaps some stripes or perhaps both at the same time. Hey, listen, and what's this? Well, a stack of CDs. You can use anything you want. I use CDs because I have them and it makes me feel good because there's actually a use for them <laughs> because you're going to want to put your checkerboard or whatever it is that you're using, you're going to want to stand it up like this, okay? You're also, water's good. Uh, you can use uh, water. I use glycerin because I find that glycerin just kind of stands up a little bit better. It's a little bit more viscous, a little thicker than water, but uh, either one works. I've used both in the past and an eyedropper is a good little tool to have too. Now, there are challenges with this. As I mentioned, you are going to have to have some patience and uh, you're going to have to take, just take your time and there's going to be trial and error. Anyway, in the end, if you stick with it, you're going to be really, really happy and come up with some really amazing images. So let's get going with the setup and then we'll take it from there. Here's the setup. This is what it looks like. You have the camera on the tripod. You have your table. You can see the checkerboard there and you can see some tissue as well. I have some toilet tissue. You can use some Kleenex or whatever you want. Uh, there's some glycerin there too and an eyedropper. Now, you'll notice if you look down below at the bottom there, you can see some tissue there and uh, an old leaf. I was trying different kind of leaves and stuff like that. The tissue is there to uh, catch the drops of glycerin that will inevitably fall. Okay, so here's the setup. Here, here's what it looks like. You don't have to use a leaf. You can use anything uh, you want. I just happen to be using uh, that kind of a look. Now, once you have your glycerin and your eyedropper all set, I was trying to put the glycerin on the top, but it was just rolling right off. And then I found that if I just placed the glycerin on the back of the leaf, it seemed to adhere a little bit better, but still it wants to roll down. So you have to be really ready to do things, okay? Because once that, once you get the water drop, most likely it's going to fall off at some point. Uh, but there it is right there. You see it? And this is what you get, a checkerboard in a water drop. Now it should be pointed out that all photos that you're going to see were shot with an aperture of f4. You may want to alter that to something a little bit deeper, maybe f8 or f11, but keep in mind that depending on how close that checkerboard is to you or whatever background you're using, um, you know, it will be a little more clear if it's uh, more of a, you know, if you have a uh, deeper depth of field and it'll be a little bit less if it's a shallower depth of field. So it just depends on, on the look you're looking for, but this is what I wanted. Okay. So that's what showed up. Now, remember I mentioned that the drop is going to be falling a little bit and the next one, see a little bit more. And then the next one, even more. <laughs> and if you wait a little bit longer, you may even capture it falling right off like this. Okay. So it just, it just depends on on the look that you want. All right. Now I also had stripes and they show up like this or a 
little bit more as you wait for that drop to come down. Or maybe you go back to the checkerboard, but you change the background a little bit so that it's showing up in the black part of the checkerboard. So you can play around with a lot of things, play around with the background and all kinds of things. Now, you'll note that that checkerboard is not as sharp as it could be. And that's because focusing is critical. And I strongly suggest that before you shoot, um, you just to make sure that it is in focus. Forget about releasing the shutter. Just make sure that uh, you take a couple of test drops and make sure that your focus is good. And then if it falls off, then just try another drop and just make sure that your focus is really good. I was using my screen on the back of my camera the, because it's just much better than a viewfinder. It's, you can really focus and uh, dial it in really, really well. Okay, little tip there for you. Now, this one. How did that happen? <laughs> well, I'm going to show you how to do this. I did it in Photoshop. Uh, I also did this one in Photoshop. So I'm going to show you how to do that. But I want you to see this first. Now, this is not something I tried, but if you don't have Photoshop or an appropriate software to uh, use layers and, uh, and have masking and things like that, maybe in the background, rather than just using stripes or a checkerboard, maybe you can combine them like this, okay? And set them up in back of your water drop and maybe it'll work. You know something, I didn't try it, but you never know. What have you got to lose, right? You have all kinds of different options. So maybe you wanna put them this way, who knows? And maybe it'll work. And I'd be interested to know if you do this, uh, how it works out because I didn't actually try it, but I had a thought that Maybe that would, that would work in lieu of something like Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop with two images, checkerboard and stripes. So what I'm going to do is take the move tool by hitting the key V and just moving it over onto the checkerboard. All right. So it doesn't have to be perfectly lined up or anything like that at this point. We're going to line it up and I'm going to go through this rather quickly. I'm not going to be too painstaking about it because I don't want to waste your time with that. I just want to show you the technique. Okay. So you have two layers, you have the checkerboard below and you have the stripes above. First thing we're going to do is find out where we're standing in terms of how they're lined up. So I'm going to lower the opacity of the top layer, which is the stripes layer, just to see how close we are and we're, we're a little bit of a ways out. So let's take that layer. We're on that layer with the stripes and let's move it up a little bit. Okay. Again, doesn't have to be perfection. Uh, I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard, uh, to move it around a little bit more. Let's just take that opacity down a bit more to see where we, where we are. Okay. I'm just going to move it down a little bit. I'm actually going to make the top image with the stripes a little larger. I'm going to use the transform tool, which is command T and I'm going to make it a little, just a little larger. There we go. And then I'm going to move it up a little bit. Again, I'm going to try to not waste too much of your time watching this just as long as you you get a rough idea of what I'm doing okay we'll hit uh, enter or return and that will save that now let's bring the opacity up to 100% and just take a look and see if they're more or less lined up if we're happy with that okay not perfect but you get the general idea and that's really what I'm trying to to show you is the general idea so let's move it a little bit closer now we're on the top layer and we want to reveal some of the checkerboard, right? Now you can do this a million different ways in terms of if you want it to be a sharp line or something a little softer and things like that. So totally up to you. Now we're going to put a mask on the top layer, the stripes, and it's going to be a 
it's going to be a mat that can uh, a mask that conceals. So we're going to hit the option key and then hit this little washer icon down here. And that's the mask and that'll bring it up as black. It's going to completely conceal that layer. All right. So the stripes are concealed. You can see the checkerboard now. Now you know that black conceals and white reveals. So we're going to hit the B key to get our brush tool. And we're going to change over here on the left hand side in the toolbar. We're going to change from black foreground to white foreground, either by hitting this little arrow thing over here or by hitting the X key, which will do the same thing. All right. Because we're going to reveal some of the stripe. And it's up to you how you do it. You can do it diagonally straight on. You can do wavy, anything you want. So the main thing now is what kind of brush do we want to use? So by holding down the control key and the option key, I can change the size of the brush and the hardness of the brush. Okay. It can be very soft or it can be hundred percent very hard right now to start with. Let's just set it at about, uh, oh, around 50% or close to it. Okay. And then let's brush on and reveal some of that, some of those stripes. Okay. Let's just see what happens here. Again, I am not going to do this over, you know, a really great job. I'm just going to, I'm showing, I'm just showing you how you, you can go about doing it. Uh, cause the drop is not perfectly lined up actually. Okay. We're not going to worry about that. You're going to worry about that when you do it. Okay. And you line it up perfectly for yourself. But that is essentially how you do it. You can place all kinds of different patterns in water drops. One time I even put a flag in the drop. You know, it, you can do anything you want. It's lots of fun. Give it a shot. I think you're really going to enjoy this project. Until next time, I'm Ray Scott reminding you to shoot small, but think big.